In today's video, we have the latest NHL trade talk concerning teams like the Vancouver Canucks, the Montreal Canadiens, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Arizona Coyotes. Plus, we have another longtime player announcing his retirement and news from the NHL waiver wire. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot of NHL news and rumors to discuss here today. Uh, let's get started first with the news that longtime NHL player Troy Brower, former Stanley Cup champion, has officially announced his retirement. Of course, just in the last few days, we saw the same thing from uh, former defenseman Dion Phaneuf. Of course, some of these guys have been out of the game for a year or two. Um, at this point, they're just kind of you know making things official, even though I guess most of us likely consider them retired for uh, for some period of time now but Troy Brower had a pretty solid career never a big superstar but certainly played uh, you know a solid role on some uh, some very successful teams played 14 years or a little bit over 850 games um, obviously was a cup champion with the Blackhawks but played with several other teams including the Capitals the Flames the Blues and a few others uh, so certainly had a long career so we'd like to uh, wish him nothing but the best in retirement here uh, some news when it comes to the Montreal Canadians. They've uh, called up young prospect Cole Caulfield, who a lot of us had pegged as being either the winner or one of the top couple of rookies in the conversation for the Calder Trophy this year. Of course, Montreal and Caulfield both had a slow start to the season, and he ended up getting demoted down to AHL Laval. Well, he's had a pretty decent showing down there. He's played six games. Uh, the last game, which was last night, was a wild game, which they were down 5-1 to one to the Marlies, battled all the way back, including going to a shootout where Caulfield scored uh, as well in the shootout and uh, a late goal in the third period. So he certainly had himself a good game last night. Uh, certainly earned this call up. I think he's done pretty well and we'll see. Now, of course, this is going to be a good opportunity for Montreal to get a good look at many of their uh, top young players that have been drafted in the past few years here all at the same time. Uh, for example, in tonight's uh, game, they're not only going to have Caulfield in the lineup, but of course they still have Romanov, who's still relatively young, uh, Ryan Paling, Caden Primo's expected to start, and Norlander as well. So that's a lot of high draft picks from the last three or four drafts all in tonight's game. So we'll see how things go uh, with Montreal. They're certainly not having the season like many thought, and uh, we'll see where it goes. I would imagine we'll see more opportunity for youngsters as the season moves along and possibly sending in a few veterans out, which we'll talk about here uh, just in a little bit. Now, of course, we also have NHL waivers news today. The Vancouver Canucks have placed uh, forward Justin Bailey on waivers. Of course, he was previously called up. He's played 10 games, so it's either 10 games or 30 days, and you need waivers again. So they've already put through the transaction to demote him to their AHL affiliate in Abbotsford. Um, should everything clear, uh, he could then be eligible for another recall and put in another 30 days or another claim should he not get picked up by any other NHL teams. But we will see uh, if that happens around the 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow afternoon. Now, on to the trade section of the video today. Uh, first off, let's start with Vancouver because we're not going to only talk about trades. Or we're going to talk about just in general what is going on with the Vancouver Canucks. They've been a hot topic this past week uh, with, uh, you know, obviously a lot of losses piling up. They had another loss, which I thought was... To me, that they should be embarrassed about how things went last night. Then they got off to a really bad start, but then they picked up the effort level. They battled back. They got the game tied up, and then they took some really stupid, dumb penalties uh, to put themselves in trouble. And they can't kill penalties at all right now, They which they should be aware of. Frustration is boiling over. Uh, you saw uh, a case where... Uh, they gave up a goal, and then immediately uh, Miller shoved a guy from behind right into the net after uh, scoring. So, you know, clearly taking out their frustrations in that regard. So that was not wise at all. I think it was actually it was Kadri that got shoved into the net. And then uh, after that, Quinn Hughes took a, a clean hit, a hard hit, from Samuel Gerrard in the Canucks zone. And then they come all the way back, and he ended up chasing him down and cross-checking him up high and taking another penalty. Broke his stick on the play, too. So, like, it was pretty obvious it was going to get called. Uh, you know, I don't uh, have any issues with the way Hughes has been playing. He's been playing really hard and putting a lot of effort in, which is great to see. But, like, that's just undisciplined, unraveling, no composure. They, they, they At this point, they, they've had so many... 
uh, tough situations, that they looked mentally fragile. Now, Jim Benning had a press conference today, and I think at this point it was kind of his turn to take some of the heat, if you will. We've heard press conferences from Tra- Travis Green, the head coach, the players have had to face the media. Now it's time to deflect some of that blame and some of that cause for concern onto the GM. Uh, we really didn't get a whole lot out of Benning, though, as far as what's being done. He kind of said that everything is on the table, though. They've explored various trades. He said he's had trade conversations with several NHL general managers. Of course, we don't know specifically uh, who he might be talking about with which teams or which players. That he wouldn't divulge, of course. That's you know not, not something we're ever going to know. Um, but at the same time, like... You know, he didn't give Travis Green a vote of confidence either. He had an opportunity based on questions the media was asking. And he could have said that, you know, the coaching staff is doing a great job. They're trying real hard. They're doing this and doing that. And we feel like, you know, we need some roster changes. He didn't take that opportunity. So I'm not really sure how he actually really feels about it. By looking at the fact that he did not take an opportunity to give a vote of confidence to the coaches and the way Travis Green looks on the bench, he last night he looked completely just dejected, frustrated, and just like almost, I wouldn't say to the point that they're giving up, but it's close. Like the frustration, it really it makes me wonder if the players want a coaching change. The way that the effort is there, like there's times the effort was really good last night, but then just some of the dumb stuff you see uh, in in some of the other previous games, the effort wasn't good at all. Um, You know, and what is going on with Elias Pettersson? Like really, like he looks like, uh, you know, nothing like he was in previous years. Like he came on the scene as a rookie and dominated and set a really high expectation and he looks nothing. He's like a shell of his former self. Now, I would hope he could get back to that. I'm sure he didn't automatically forget how to play hockey going through those difficult contract negotiations this offseason. But times are tough there. Like, it's brutal. That penalty kill is probably the worst of all time since they've been tracking the stat. Uh, like it's pretty much a, a given goal now if they go to the box. It's brutal. Absolutely brutal. So if they're going to be talking trade, though, what might they do? I mean... You know, I'm not sure there's a lot of contracts on that roster that they'd be able to move and get a decent return. You'd have to be looking at guys like Brock Besser, Bo Horvat, for example. Um, you know, maybe JT Miller. Miller's been playing well. So, but if you take him out of the picture, then what happens? You know, Connor Garland's been a solid player. Uh, he always will give you the effort night in, night out. He's one of those guys you can depend on for that. The blue line certainly could be better as well. Could they maybe look to move Tyler Myers? I'm not sure anybody's going to take that contract, though. That's a, certainly another case of an overpayment. I, I just don't know. Like, I'm not really sure what they're going to do. But it's confirmed from Benning today that they're certainly exploring the trade market. And I would say that if a few more games go on, even though I personally have said myself, I thought Benning would be the one to go more likely than Green. That was my opinion really up until about the last game, between the last game last night and the press conference today. Now I think it might be more likely that Green does get let go and Benning try to do a coaching change and a trade and try to save himself here because uh, it seems like he bought himself some time. Uh, the Aquilini's had a chance to uh, you go in a new direction. They didn't take it. But if you look at the Aquilini's past, uh, and how things have been handled, they're not typically the type to fire anybody without having the next person ready to take over. So will they consider that in the short term? It's really difficult to say. They're tough to read that way, I feel. So uh, I, I don't know. Just looking at the on ice product, I have to think Travis Green is in real trouble at this point. Uh, and maybe we'll see a trade or two to shake things up to see if they can get things turned around in an effort for Jim Benning to save his job. But in my opinion, it's long overdue that they make a change to the GM role as well and really get somebody in there who can manage the cap better uh, and just get this team back on track. Now, when it comes to the Montreal Canadiens, a lot of talk around them, obviously given the fact that uh, they've had a lot of issues this year with not doing well, not winning. At the same time, there's some holes in their lineup now based on what they lost in the offseason. Um, so a lot of talk about them. So there's mention about an Elliot Friedman's latest 32 thoughts blog. And he talked about it a bit on the latest edition of the Jeff Merrick show earlier today, talking about Montreal and the fact that they, he's, he says he's convinced they're looking for a puck moving defenseman. So as we mentioned before, there was some linkage to possibly looking at Samuel Girard. I mean, of course he's young. He's got a good contract. He's got some term on it. I know it shouldn't matter, but it does to them that he is, 
uh, you know, a French player. Um, that seems to be important to the organization to have as many players around who can speak French and from Quebec as possible. Another player that's been tossed around as well as a possibility, which could also be a fit on a few other teams, would be Shane Goss's bear who's uh, kind of rejuvenating his career a bit with the Arizona Coyotes. So the Montreal Canadiens are certainly looking to add a puck-moving defenseman, but at the same time, it's believed that Ben Sherratt likely is going to be dealt ahead of the NHL trade deadline. And Elliot Friedman on the Jeff Merrick Show today was talking about the fact that he feels they might be able to get a first-round pick for him. Merrick brought up Sherratt as a possible trade target and said that he was talking with some people about the potential return, wondering if a second-round pick might get it done, where Friedman says he really thinks that somebody out there would be willing to pay a first-rounder given the fact that Ben Sherrod's got a lot of experience. He's battle-tested. He's been through a lot of playoffs, and he can get the job done. He's low-maintenance in that regard. You know what you're getting. Um, so maybe we'll see if anybody's willing to pay that price. But either way, I do expect him to be moved. Given the fact that he's a pending unrestricted free agent and everything that Montreal is going through, it doesn't really make sense for them to re-sign a 30-year-old defenseman at this point. Uh, one team that Friedman mentions as a potential good fit, at least in his opinion, he didn't have any... You know, sources indicating that they've been talking or there's interest, but he thought a good place for Sherratt would be the Edmonton Oilers. So clearly the Oilers are having a good season. They feel good about themselves, uh, and they certainly will be very, very likely, if things keep going the way they are, to be a team that adds at the deadline, and certainly adding a defenseman would make a lot of sense. You can never have enough quality defensemen uh, going into the playoffs. Of course, the Oilers' blue line, though, has been pretty good. I'm not sure exactly what Holland will end up doing, but it does potentially be a fit but there's other teams out there as well who could be in line for a player like Sherratt so I don't think there'll be any shortage of interest in the Habs if they can create a little bit of a bidding war very well could possibly find themselves getting a first round pick now after finding himself a healthy scratch for the first time pretty well in his career uh, Wayne Simmons in Toronto uh, there's some talk now that maybe he could be expendable especially with the recent acquisition of Kyle Clifford who of course had a stint with the Maple Leafs before, who came over from the St. Louis Blues for future considerations. Uh, Simmons certainly isn't paid big money to put up big points like Matthews and Marner, Tavares, etc., but certainly you know hasn't quite uh, produced to the level that they were expecting. I believe he's got like three points on the season. Um, you know he's certainly there to provide some leadership, some physicality, and they also gave him a second year on the contract, which might prove to be difficult to make a trade for as well teams might be reluctant to take that on given the fact that there's still another year after the current year on the contract but uh, there is talk about him maybe being an expendable piece we've seen the maple leafs uh, obviously you know lose players to the waiver wire already this year uh, they have you know certainly for the most part they have their their top nine even for a lot of their forward groups pretty well intact with some you know minor changes but you have to wonder though with clifford now in the mix what that means for Simmons. I'm not convinced 100% that they're going to trade Wayne Simmons, but the fact that he was recently a healthy scratch and, you know, a little bit more competition for the type of role that he brings, some are wondering out there if he might be able to be moved to free up a little bit of space and maybe bring in a different asset that might be able to help in different regards that way. So we'll have to remain to be seen on that, but uh, we don't really have any strong indication that he's being shopped at the moment. When it comes to Arizona, though, uh, clearly they have players that they're looking to trade. Uh, word is that they're still looking to stockpile as many draft picks as possible, and players like Phil Kessel, Shane Gossesbear, Antoine Roussel, and even possibly Lawson Kroos as well could all be had for the right price uh, ahead of the NHL trade deadline to continue that draft pick stockpiling so clearly Kessel is the one with the most experience but Goss's bear has generated a little bit of a, a market for himself based on how he's played as I mentioned there, uh, when they're talking about the Montreal Canadiens there are other teams that likely will be interested and I have to think a team like the New York Islanders would be right up that alley for Goss's bear I mean considering the fact we've talked a lot about lately the fact that they need uh, a puck moving ideally left shot defenseman who can play around 20 minutes a night and take the pressure off some of the older guys that are probably playing too much and hopefully won't play too much with the uh, injury to Ryan Pollock being putting him out for four to six weeks. If they can bring in a guy like Gosses Bear, that would really lighten the load on the other guys and kind of balance things out a lot better. Difficult to say exactly how quickly some of these players will get moved, but the deadline's still being quite a ways away. But if I'm Lou Lamarillo on the Islanders, I probably wouldn't wait too long given the fact of where you're at in the standings and the injuries, etc. You need to get things moving here in the right direction quickly before it gets too tough to get caught back up. So let me know your thoughts on everything discussed here down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.